The information in this video is for educational purposes only. It is not intended to diagnose or treat any specific medical condition. Use of this information is not a substitute for advice from your physician or therapist. So I'm showing you this model up here that's going to be somewhat similar to this model that I showed. Then this here is the muscle that's interwoven throughout the fascia. Now what's important to know is that good healthy tissue has a contraction, elongation, contraction, elongation. And I'll describe why that's so important in just a moment. So I have a model right here and we have the brain then we have the muscle. We have several muscles here. We have two muscles, that's the blue, and these black and green circles represent joints. The red represents the fascia, and these green circles represent the lymphatics and venous system, a critically important vascular system that helps drain waste material away from tissues. So, the brain sends a signal to contract the muscle. So it comes down here, contracts, great, contracts. But it also sends signals a little bit to the fascia because remember the fascia acts as a um, scaffolding to help guide and transmit the forces that are being accumulated. So remember, the brain isn't going to contract both of these muscles at the same time. There's already a pre-programmed coordinated movement, so it will contract this muscle first and this fascia layer, and then it'll contract here and here, and this muscle will have to absorb the forces generated by this muscle along with the fascial scaffolding so that more forces can be generated down uh, the body. So. After this contraction happens, then there's going to be some type of metabolic waste. That's normal. It's natural. Lactic acid, a little bit of inorganic phosphates, some mild inflammatory markers, not necessarily inflammation, but just some inflammatory markers, and I'll represent them as this. So how does a body get rid of these metabolic wastes? Well, with every contraction and elongation of the muscles here, this tissue flattens and expands, flattens and expands. And that allows for the metabolic waste to go into the veins and the lymphatics. And then that, squish, that squishing of the lymphatics and opening actually pumps the metabolic waste away from the tissue, back into our veins, then back to our health, uh, our heart, which then gets recycled which then goes to our kidneys and out of, into our liver uh, as we go to the bathroom. Or we breathe it out, which is the, has to do with carbon dioxide. So this nice coordinated system not only helps with the activation and generation of force, but at the same time, it's removing metabolic waste. The removal of metabolic waste is important because if this metabolic waste accumulates and gets too much, two things will develop. One, fatigue of the muscle. There'll be less effective neural input to these muscles because of the accumulated metabolic waste. But secondly, too, you also have these other nerve endings that, uh, go from, that are attached around here, and they go back up to the brain. And if too many of these get stimulated by this metabolic waste, the brain signals ache, discomfort, and even pain. So the more effective waste removal we have, the less pain and discomfort we will have. Now you may have experienced this. When you sit in a, in a position or a posture for too long, it hurts. Well, that muscle hasn't been stretched and elongated, stretch elongated, to pump out the metabolic waste, so you readjust your position. You stand up, you move around. That type of movement is pumping out the metabolic waste through the fascial system by way of the lymphatics and the veins. So that's a common reason why we generate pain in itself. Now, if you have a myofascial kinetic chain dysfunction, well then this fascia isn't gonna work effectively, 
and it, consequently, it may not allow one or, the, one or more of these muscles to work well, causing other muscles in our body to have to overload, or you won't be able to have enough drainage of the metabolic waste, or a combination of both, leading to persistent pain. But the good news is, if we exercise the myofascial system, we can help improve the metabolic waste removal, we can help improve the tension and the force transmission in order to be much more effective and have much more efficient movement patterns.